Om Sum was answering a question in class uh -huh. when everyone suddenly turned to look at him. Huh? His cheeks grew warm, and within seconds, they turned bright pink. Embarrassed and confused, he wondered, why do we blush? Determined to find out, Aum Sum shrank and entered his own body. Aum Sum landed in a region huh? deep within his brain called the hypothalamus. It was reacting to the sudden attention and strong emotion Aum Sum had felt just moments earlier. The hypothalamus sent out commands through the nerves, activating a special part of the nervous system that controlled automatic reactions in the body. Aum Sum zoomed huh? back to the face and saw the message arrive. The tiny blood vessels beneath his skin began to widen. This widening process was called dilation. As the vessels expanded, more warm blood flowed into them. The skin above the vessels began to glow pink, then brighter, creating the blush. Aum Sum also saw that blushing didn't happen everywhere. The skin on the face, especially the cheeks, had many sensitive vessels close to the surface. That made huh? the color change more noticeable here than on other parts of the body. <laughs> Smiling proudly, Aum Sum now understood the mystery. Aum Sum was walking through a park on a cool autumn morning when something beautiful caught his eye. The trees had turned bright shades of yellow, orange, and red. <laughs> Amazed, Aum Sum wondered, why do leaves change color? <laughs> Determined to find out, he shrank and entered a nearby leaf. He landed inside <laughs> the leaf's surface. Aum Sum looked around and saw structures called chloroplasts. They were full of a green pigment called chlorophyll. During huh? warm months, chlorophyll absorbed sunlight and helped the tree make food. It gave the leaves their rich green color. But as Aum Sum explored deeper, he noticed something changing. The air outside had become cooler and daylight was shorter. The tree sensed huh? the change in seasons. It began to slow down its food-making process because winter was approaching. Inside the leaf, the chlorophyll that once worked non-stop had started breaking down fading little by little. With the green color disappearing, Aum Sum began to see huh? other pigments that had always been there huh? but were hidden before. Bright yellow and orange pigments spread warm shades throughout the leaf. As autumn appeared, huh? Aum Sum watched sugars trapped in the leaf react with sunlight and cold air, creating rich red colors. The leaf around him was now a mix of colors, glowing with reds, oranges, and yellows. Smiling proudly, Aum Sum now <laughs> understood the mystery. Aum Sum sat on a park bench <laughs> with a candy in his hand. The moment he popped it into his mouth, his face lit up with delight. The sugary sweetness made him curious. He wondered, why does sugar taste sweet? Determined to find out, he shrank and entered his own mouth. Inside, he landed on the tongue's surface with tiny sugar crystals melting on it. As he looked around, Um Sum noticed huh? hundreds of tiny dome-shaped structures called taste buds scattered all over. Um Sum climbed onto one of the taste buds and watched the sugary liquid seep into it. The sugar molecules reached the special receptor cells inside the dome. Each of these cells had microscopic hair-like structures called taste hairs, waving like antennas. When the sugar molecules touched them, the receptor cells sent electrical messages through nearby nerves. Um Sum followed the signals as they zipped away through a glowing tunnel of nerve fibers, racing toward the brain. The brain instantly recognized this signal as sweet. Um Sum watched as the brain responded by releasing a wave of pleasant chemicals called dopamine, making him feel happy and satisfied. The sweetness wasn't just a flavor. It was the brain's way of rewarding the body for finding energy-rich food. Smiling proudly, Um Sum now understood the mystery. Um 
Sum was playing in the garden when he tripped and scraped his knee. It stung for a moment, and a thin red line appeared on his skin. A few drops of blood trickled out, but after a few days the wound began to close on its own. <laughs> Amazed, he wondered, why do our wounds heal? Determined to find out, Um Sum shrank and entered his own body. He landed near the injured spot on his knee. White blood cells and platelets were rushing toward the wound like huh? rescuers on a mission. The platelets arrived first. They quickly formed a soft, sticky layer across the cut, creating a clot that stopped the bleeding. Then, the white blood huh? cells moved in. They swallowed any dirt or germs that had entered, protecting the wound from infection. Then, beneath the clot, skin cells called fibroblasts started building fresh tissue made of collagen. Slowly, this new tissue began to fill in the gap left by the injury. The edges of the skin started to pull closer together, like a zipper closing. Over the next few days, the clot on the surface dried and turned into a scab. It acted like a shield, covering the delicate new tissue underneath while it continued to grow. Eventually, the scab loosened and fell off, revealing smooth pink skin underneath. Leaping back outside, Um Sum smiled proudly. 